What's happening guys, welcome back to the channel. So, in the last episode on this XV750, we've got the new rear set brackets designed, made and fitted on. And we also got the headlight brackets designed, made and fitted on to the bike. In this episode, we're gonna start trying to look at the electrical system. Which I've gotta say, I'm not overly looking forward to. So, looking at the bike, what I've done is mounted a few bits under the fuel tank in the void that's created by the fuel tank and then under the seat. So under the seat we've mounted the regulator rectifier um, and under the tank we've mounted the starter solenoid, the Moto Gadget M unit blue and the anti-gravity lithium battery. All fits under there, tank sits over it nice. The only problem we might have is the Bluetooth might struggle a little bit being under metal but we've really got nowhere else we can put it so that's where it has to go. So with what we've got to do now is work out how to wire it all together to make the bike run. Now I'm not worried about any of the other controls, the headlights and all things like that, that's pretty easy stuff. It's just trying to integrate this new system with the old bike. Now I'm not sure how much explaining I'm going to do but what I am going to do is chuck the camera on the side and make a start on trying to work these bits out get a few bits wider and then we'll probably come back, explain what I've done and talk to you a little bit about it. So yeah, can't put it off any longer. Let's jump into it. After a few hours of head scratching and thankfully Neroy being here, I've managed to get all of the wiring done on the starting and charging side of the M unit. But what's this M unit I keep talking about? So this here is the M unit, it's a Moto Gadget Mo Unit Blue. So this unit is Bluetooth, it will link to your phone and you can program all sorts of different settings, how much the indicators flash um, on the button, you can have multiple different things on one button, so this one button probably is going to be dip beam, main beam, and then you can flash with it as well. You can program all sorts of different things into it. Basically what this does, in the standard wiring loom on the bike, which is this absolute mess, you've got resistors, relays, fuses, all sorts of different things going on, which is very old technology. This Mo unit here basically does away with all of that. I think what it's referred to as is a solid state. So it's got relays, resistors and all things in there. It's solid state, so nothing will break, as in a fuse won't break. Um, you just get a warning light on to say that there's a fault with the circuit. You can then find the fault. Once you've fixed the fault, the light will go out and you're back to running again. So you've not got to go carrying fuses and all sorts of different things like that. It's just a great little simplified standalone system to run on one of these sorts of bikes where room really is at a premium. So basically that loom ran down the bike, but all of the fuses and all of the relays and everything went in the back of the headlight. And I've opted for a um, narrow, a shallow bucket, so we can't fit anything else in there. So for me, this system works brilliantly. It isn't cheap, but it's well worth doing. I wasn't really sure what I was doing wiring it up, um, and I've got the XV750 manual here with the wiring diagrams, which is one of the easiest to understand wiring diagrams I've ever looked at. I also printed off a couple of other ones that were conflicting with each other. Neil Roy was there, like I say, he's wired his XS750 up before as well, so he sort of knew what he was doing already. So we went quickly through what was what. So let me show you how I've wired up and what I've done. So what are the components that we've got so far? Obviously we've got the Mo unit here, We've got an anti-gravity 12 cell lithium ion battery here. This is a starter solenoid and basically what that does is it, these two wires here are a switch inside that basically put a bit of metal across these two which then allows full current from the battery to the start mode to start your bike. Under here we've got regulator rectifier which comes out of the alternator here. So this is power coming out of the alternator, it goes into this with a little bit of magic and wizardry. It, alters the current and flow rate and everything like that so that whatever comes out of this wire isn't going to fry and kill our system it's regulated to the correct voltage for the system that we need with a lithium setup that and that were from anti-gravity batteries uk i'll put a link in the description to those guys that have been an absolutely storming deal on these and in my opinion if you're going to do something do it with the best that you can buy so power comes out of the alternator goes into the regulator rectifier that rectifies and changes everything that then comes in here 
to help charge and keep your battery running and obviously keep the system running. This wire here then comes out the engine and this is the pickup coil, so basically telling the spark plugs when to spark. So this wire comes out here, we've got, we've not changed any of this, this is a standard connection, plugs straight in and comes up here to the TCI unit. The other wire coming out of that is this wire here which comes down, we've put a plug on here and joined wires up how we need to join them. They go off to the coils which then send power to your spark plugs. Powering up that side of the system we've got this wire here which is wired into these which goes into ignition on the MO unit. So basically that sends power to tell it that it needs to basically start and turn on. This is the starter relay so we've basically got 12 volt power direct from the battery. I do need to put a fuse into this but I've not got one. That wire then goes off down to the starter motor and you've got these two wires on top here. Red is positive, blue is negative and the red wire goes into there which is one of the starting ports. So basically when you press your starter button and the ignition's on, power will go down this, push a contact over these two points, allow power to come from the battery through here down to the start motor to start your bike. But to get all of that working we need an ignition switch and we also need a button to start it. So what I've done for both of those is a bit of a bodge. So to bypass the need for an ignition switch at the moment because I still need to take it off of the other bike and put it on here. We've got a wire coming out of here which is locked which is for your ignition and all we're going to do with that is put a piece of wire in it and a piece of wire over to 12 volt and basically that's just bypassing the switch. So now everything is live as it needs to be. So to get this working we've got an earth here which is just I've just pulled out of the handlebar, pulled round and is pushed under here so this is earthing to the chassis and then we've got this yellow wire here which comes down that side of the frame, it's all too long obviously I've got to tidy it all up, that then comes in here to start. So now if we press that button here, the engine should turn over. So we're going to hold this on here to bypass the ignition switch and give power to the M unit which we've done, we've got lights. So now if we press this button it should turn over. <laughs> turns over, we know it turns over. We now need to check if we've got a spark, so I'm going to whip the plug out, we'll hold that on there and see if we've got a spark. So we've got the spark plug off and so that the threads of it are touching part of the chassis there, so let's try and bypass that and see if we get a spark. Yes, we have a spark, so if we add fuel to this, this bike should now run. But before we do that, what I want to do, because my intention is to ride this down the yard, as it is to make sure you can see I've got the throttle off of the XV750 on it there as well just to give us a throttle because I need to order new cables and things to get what I want to use working. So what we're going to do now is wire the rest of the bike up, get all the lights working, get the kill switch, the horn, everything on it that needs to be working, working and then we've essentially dry built the bike before we're then going to end up blowing it to pieces for paint and powder and things like that and cleaning everything up to then reassemble. So the first thing I want to do is French as I keep referring it to, this rear light into this seat hoop. Round it at the back of the bike then, I explained in an earlier episode the rear light that we're putting in it and it's this all in one little piece here. So side, brake and left and right indicator are all in one little unit. Now some people just stick them on the outside like that. It's a bit of an afterthought in my opinion. So what I want to do is cut a slot in here. We can slide this up the tube, bring it back round to here and all we'll see is the clear lens and the LEDs out of it. Well, that's the idea anyway. So, what we're going to do now is find, I've, I've found the center and found the end points. I'm now going to drill two holes in it because this wants to be, I think is about eight mil wide, the groove wants to be. Draw two holes, join them up with a line, cut that out. Hopefully that'll be that, as I'm keep calling it, Frenched in. So let's go with that, see if it works.
But that was a hell of a lot easier than I expected it to be. So there is that like Frenched in. I don't know why I keep referring to it as French. I think that's what it is when you're smoothing something in. But that's what we call it anyway. We've Frenched the light into this back seat hoop. Obviously the, the hole needs a bit of tidying up and a bit of cleaning. But we've got it pushed up quite tight to the back edge. Like I said, we've drilled and tapped three holes here in the back. The fixings go through and just push this out to here. I think, to be honest, when it's done, what I'm going to do and it's all painted, I'm going to put a tiny little bit of bead of silicon, clear silicon around the edges, just to seal it and stop any water from getting inside, obviously, with the back of the bike being quite open. If it ever was ridden in the rain, which I hope it won't be, but if it ever was, I'd hate for water to get in there and start rotting this from the inside out. So that's that little bit again done we're building the bike to a point it's not finished but for now it's done what i've done in there as well is i've extended all these wires down um, to this end they're all heat shrunk soldered together heat shrunk and then heat shrunk the whole loom together so they now need to go off to the m unit to the correct place to get those working at the rear what i want to do now is we're going to get the headlight working which i've got on the bench i've got hooked up to a battery with my power probe so Let's see what wire does what. So we've got the power probe on obviously a battery positive and negative. We've got the earth for the light hooked up to the negative on that side as well. And this, if I put, if I press it that way, it gives me a positive and if I press it that way, it gives me a negative. So we want positive. So yellow wire gives us, that gives us dip beam. Red wire gives us main beam. Uh, blue wire gives us indicator, which I think that is the right indicator that one gives us the DRL so this has actually got DRLs built into it and then that one gives us the other indicator so I've written down on a piece of paper what they are and what each one does so what I can do now is go through my loom oh, go through the wiring that Moto Gadget that I got with the Moto Gadget stuff extend all of those wires so that they'll come from the headlight bucket down here to the M unit get them put in and then the next step is to move on to the switches but let's get this bit done and hopefully I'm really hoping we're going to get all these bits working on this today and here we are a few hours later and I've got to apologize I've actually got the bike wide up and pretty much working so I can't remember where we left off we've now got the buttons all on and we've got the rear light obviously you've seen is all Frenched in headlight is on and all the wiring everything's ran for it so let me drop it down a bit and we'll show you all the lights working because it's very exciting so I've, I've wired the ignition in now into the obviously the ignition side of the motor so the key goes in turn it on mo ride, ride ready so we've got the mo ride app on my phone as well so it's linked to my phone and we've got keyless go so i've wired the key if you didn't do what I did, which is wire a key in. You can wire it in so that you just need your phone. And as long as your phone's within a certain distance of the Mo unit, you can just walk up to it, start the bike and ride off. I've just wired a key in as a bit of a safety thing. So, phone is now connected to it. It's all on. We've got, first one, horn. Horn works. We've got left indicator, right indicator, press them together. You've got hazards, which is a nice little feature. Turn that off. We've got engine start, which is in gear, so that was not a good idea. <laughs> but anyway, that one works. Uh, kill as well. We've got a kill switch on there for when the engine's running. And then we've got dip beam, main beam, and off. So we've got lights on the front. Let me show you lights on the back. So at the back, we've got light in here. We've got... Side light, which is nice. We've got left indicator, right indicator, which you can just see. Hazards again, which is a nice little touch. And I'll turn what we've got going on. And then we've got brake light as well, which is funky. Now, looking at my wiring, it's not the neatest. Look at the absolute spaghetti. I've got to clean it up. Obviously, it's going to be cleaned and tidied up. It isn't staying like this. We've got cables rooted in all sorts of different ways. But they're not staying in. I literally just wanted to throw this system on, make sure that we could get the integration and everything working. I have off camera put the fuel tank on, chucked a little bit of fuel in it, 
and we got the engine firing. It didn't run, but it was firing and it did run for a few seconds. So we sort of know that the majority of what we've done is going to work, which is what I wanted to do. So what I'm probably going to do next is we're going to have to try and cut all these top yoke down and mount the dashboard and then integrate the dashboard system into all to get all of that working and get some engine pickups for that speed sensor and things of that nature. We need to tidy all of this wiring up. Now I've ordered some sheathing, which is going to go over all of this as well to tidy it up. Obviously we'll shorten everything. I'm not 100% sure with what I've done here and placed things. I'm probably going to take, take it apart and have a play and move things about again. Um, but like I say, what I wanted to achieve, we have achieved in getting the bike together, all the electrics working, because I was quite worried about it because I'm not the best at electrics. Hopefully this video has been some form of enjoyable. Apologies if I've waffled on quite a lot. This, doing this bike is a massive learning curve. It's even bigger than more of a learning curve than when I'm working on a car because for some reason in my head bikes are just completely different. But we're heading in the right direction. Thank you all so much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. We'll leave that on there, guys. Until next time, enjoy.